Hey guys, this is Dr. Harrington again. I know you guys are getting ready for your final, so I figured we'd do a quick review from my four lectures just for you to know what I think is very important. Now, you may have seen some of these test questions before. You may be seeing some of, some of them new, but I'm going to try to help you focus the most important stuff you should be working on, otherwise known as just watch this, know everything that's in here, and you'll be fine. All right, first of all, benign paroxysmal uh, peripheral vertigo. It's a triggered episodic vertigo. What that means is you have no vertigo at rest. If you turn your head, you become vertiginous, you get dizzy. All right, usually there's a slight delay, particularly with the Dix Hall Pike, right? When you turn their head and lay them back, it should take a couple seconds. This then resolves over minutes. And it's fatigable, so if you do this test again and again and again, it gets better and better and better. But remember, you diagnose this with the Dix Hall Pike test. Meniere's disease, remember it is spontaneous episodic vertigo. Nothing you do makes this come or go. When people get episodes, they typically, they classically last about 30 minutes. And this is associated with tinnitus, oral fullness, or a full feeling in their ear, and hearing loss. That is classic Meniere's. Remember, if somebody has dizziness, and a headache, even if it's dizziness, ear pain, and a headache, and particularly if they have a stiff neck, you need to do a lumbar puncture, right? Because that could very well be meningitis. Always rule out the bad things. All right, ataxia, abnormal mental status, and eye movement disorders or visual changes. That's Wernicke's encephalopathy, right? Be able to recognize that. Remember, it's associated with thiamine deficiency. That's classically, at least in the board world, that's associated with long-term alcoholism, right? It's usually just chronic malnutrition. And we talked about lots of other reasons, but that's your classic. Basically, these are drunk people who look really drunk, okay? But they're ataxic, they have altered mental status, and then the classic, uh, the classic eye change is nystagmus. Remember, these folks can have focal neurological deficits. You always give them thiamine, then glucose, and if they have focal neurological deficits, then work them up. So do a CT scan of their head and evaluate them for stroke. Remember the other things about these folks is they're higher risk for falls because they're drunk and because they're ataxic, and so they're higher risk of getting a subdural hematoma. Remember your GCS and how to calculate it. This tends to be pretty easy. So remember you get one through four for I problems, right? If they open it to pain, they get two, voice, three, spontaneous, four. You have five factors associated with uh, your voice or uh, speaking, and you have six uh, related to movement. So know those. Uh, uh, level of consciousness. Remember, coma means to not be aware and not be responsive. You're neither aware nor responsive. A vegetative state is arousal without awareness. So you can have random sleep wake cycles. You may open and close your eyes, but you're not meaningfully responsive to anything. And a persistent vegetative state is a vegetative state for greater than one month. Remember that anytime you have a patient with focal neurological signs, with a decreased level of consciousness or with seizures, check a finger stick glucose, check their blood sugar. Low blood sugar can cause focal neurological signs that look like a stroke. Low blood sugar can cause a decreased level of consciousness. And low blood sugar can cause seizures. Make sure to check it in all. It's the quickest test you can do. You can do it at bedside. It's always a good first test. In acute vestibular syndrome, and there was some confusion about this. In an acute vestibular syndrome, so not triggered, not spontaneous episodic, they've never had this before, new onset, fairly rapid onset, head impulse test, if it's positive, it is a peripheral disorder. So a positive head impulse test is a peripheral disorder, otherwise known as a good thing. If the head impulse test is negative, there's something bad going on mostly meaning there's a brainstem stroke. Okay, so if you have a patient who has crossed signs, so sensory problems on one side of the face and the other side of the body, cranial nerve deficit, somebody who's really sick, all right? 
So they have a brainstem lesion. They're gonna have a negative head impulse test that makes this test very unusual. You're gonna have a positive Romberg test because usually you damage the vestibular nucle nuclei, right? And a Romberg test tends to be positive in most vestibular and proprioceptive disorders, okay? The BPPV test, right? So the Dix-Hall-Pike test is gonna be false positive. Because any, think about it, anytime you take a dizzy person and you turn their head side to side, they get more dizzy. It's not a specific test, and that's why I really tried to impress upon you guys that you only do that test in a triggered vestibular syndrome, a triggered episodic vestibular syndrome, because the problem is it will give you a false positive in all the rest. If you get somebody who is basically hypo everything, Okay, so decreased level of consciousness or a hypo level of consciousness, right? Cold, hypothermia, bradycardic, bradypneic, hypotensive, hyporeflexic. Okay, particularly with puffy features and puffy legs, that's a myxedema coma, right? Remember, for absence seizures, okay, you're, uh, you're going to diagnose it on EEG with the 3 hertz one, two, three, spike and wave pattern shown at the top here. Remember that you treat it with ethosuximide. Remember the kid was saying this sucks. It's ethosuximide. Super important, easy stuff to remember. Remember, status epilepticus is functionally defined. It's operatively defined as a seizure lasting five minutes. Okay, that's when we start getting aggressive treating seizures at five minutes. So technically or functionally, we're going to describe status epilepticus as a seizure for five minutes or two seizures without complete resolution. So we're at resolution of the postictal phase in between. They're having lots of seizures back to back to back. It's like a seizure storm. Remember, somebody who presents with a seizure, do not put anything in their mouth. You manage their airway, so make sure their airway stays open and nothing gets in there. Get an IV, give them a benzodiazepine, so Ativan is usually our first line, or lorazepam. Check a blood sugar. We talked about this already. Always check a blood sugar. All right, so we just said this. First line treatment for an active seizure is benzodiazepines, and usually Ativan or lorazepam is what you're going to learn. Also about absent seizures, remember they have no postictal phase. Remember that urinary incontinence can occur in both seizures and syncope, so it's an unreliable sign. Just because somebody wet themselves doesn't mean it was a seizure. If a patient has right-sided, or, or so we'll just say right-sided face problems and left-sided body problems, or vice versa, particularly sensory problems, plus cranial nerve deficits, it is a brainstem lesion. That's all I personally want you to know about this. Okay, if you have a patient with arm weakness and numbness, okay, start thinking about that as an MCA stroke. I do understand there are some uh, strokes down in towards the thalamus that can do this. Okay, but let's think arm weakness or, or you know face and arm weakness and numbness plus language is a dominant hemisphere MCA stroke plus problems with spatial awareness and neglect is a non-dominant hemisphere stroke. If you have leg weakness or numbness, that's an ACA stroke. In my world, that's what you need to know. Okay, so let's keep it simple. Alexia without agraphia. Okay, so alexia means you cannot read without agraphia, so you can still write. So I could have you write something and then you would not be able to read it back to me. Is specific for an occipital lobe stroke. And we had a patient in our stroke lecture who did exactly this. Anybody with neck pain or trauma with any anterior cerebral or middle cerebral artery signs or symptoms has a carotid dissection until proven otherwise. So your classic example is somebody went to the chiropractor and had their neck adjusted and now they have problems speaking or they have unilateral weakness or numbness. And you do a CT angiogram, which is shown on the left here, to evaluate for this. Remember, prosopagnosia is the inability to distinguish faces. And lastly, seizure is the most common misdiagnosis of stroke. Oh, excuse me, there's one more. 
do not give nitrates in stroke. Remember, your ABCs of blood pressure meds are ACE inhibitors, beta blockers, and calcium channel blockers. All right, good luck, guys.